Welcome to Caldwell County Today. I'm Paige Counts, Public Information Officer for Caldwell County. Joining me today is April Austin from the Caldwell Senior Center. Welcome, April. Thanks for having us back. April, before we started filming, we were talking about how busy you are and how busy the Senior Center is with activities. We are, we are busy, very busy. Our calendar is full every day. Our schedule's full. We are open and doing everything that we've done in the past and then some. So it's a really kind of exciting time. Um, so we're going to talk about highlights today. We're not even going to really just barely skim the surface. Okay, first you've got <laughs> fitness programs and you offer a variety of fitness programs. We do and it's, I think it's important to, to bring that back up pretty often because you know people don't really know you know is there something I can do maybe I'm not able to do this and we have a little bit of something for everybody so we offer a lot of different fitness classes for different levels, different people, different interests. So we have our senior strength and cardio programs, our balance builders class, three different levels of line dance. So if you want to line dance and you don't know how, you can come. We've got a beginner class and an intermediate and an advanced. So we've got something for everybody. Um, we have two different Tai Chi classes that we're teaching, two different styles of Tai Chi. Uh, we have Thera Fitness, which is a relatively new program um, that's, that's happening on Tuesday afternoons that focuses on breathing and posture and alignment. It's a very, it's not your traditional exercise class. It's a very slow moving, thoughtful process. And it's something I think a lot of people would really enjoy. And we have our fitness room that's open all the time. And we have classes in the morning and some in the afternoons and some at night. So we try to spread it out. So we have a little bit of something for everybody. And we really encourage people to try our classes, or if you're not sure what might be a good fit, if you want to call us and we'll talk to you about what we offer, what kind of level you should be at, you know, if you're something that you may or may not be able to do because of a physical limitation, we can kind of steer you to the right direction. But like Tai Chi can be done by anyone, anywhere. Um, Thera Fitness can be done for, by anybody at any level. So, and of course, you know, the fitness room, you can use what you're comfortable with and work at your own pace. In our fitness room, we've got, um, basically new, pretty brand new equipment in that. Um, we got some equipment while we were closed during COVID. And so some of it's not even been used hardly at all. So it's almost brand new and it's there for people to use for free. And one thing about your fitness programs, not only does it accommodate your physical health, mm -hmm. but also your mental health, because they're also very social. Absolutely. You make friends in these programs. You do. And, and really that's one of the things I think that people, um, get out of our programs, especially in the classes I teach and the line dance, you know, they're not, they're not real serious classes. We want to have a good time while we're doing it. And we tell stories and we tell jokes and we check on how people are doing. And if you miss class for a couple of days, there's a good chance somebody's going to be calling to find out where you're at to make sure you're okay. Um, just because, you know, we do, we kind of become our own little family mm -hmm. and we want to support people and, Exercise is just so much more fun if you do it with a group and do it together because you do make friends and we're all there just to try to make our lives a little bit better, not necessarily to judge anybody on where they're at or what they can do. And, you know, I tell my classes all the time, if you don't like what I'm doing, do something else. I'm not going to get my feelings or just do, just move, just do something to keep moving and keep active. And that's really important. That is really important. And you mentioned you become like family. Speaking of family... <laughs> You have advanced care planning. We do, and we've we've always had advanced <laughs> care planning, um, and and I I always bring it up because it's probably one of the most important services that we offer. We partner with Amorum to go over those health care documents, the health care power of attorney, the living will, help you answer those questions, fill out those documents, and then we have notary services available um, if you're ready to execute those documents. And it's really important, you know, they're a gift for your family to let them know what your health care decisions are, what you want, who you want to be making decisions if you're unable to do them. And I tell people all the time, they say, well, I don't think I need that right now. But when you do need it, it's typically too late to mm -hmm. fill it out. So we encourage people to be proactive. And it's a service we offer for free. We do it the second Thursday of every month at 1.30. But they are limited in space. So we encourage people to call and sign up. The next one is going to be April the 11th. So we encourage people to call and sign up, get on the list for one of those classes if they'd like to get those documents done. Or even if you did those documents a long time ago, you may want to pull them back out and make sure the information's still accurate because you might need a new one if someone's moved or changed or you have you know, different circumstances, you may want to make some adjustments to those documents. 
very important stuff. You also have March Madness going on, and it looks like, as I'm reading the slide, <laughs> this has nothing to do with filling out your brackets. <laughs> we are not filling out our brackets. However, that gives me some ideas for next year. But it is March Madness, and I think everybody from North Carolina especially, March Madness is a big deal. I know it is in a lot of places, mm -hmm. but I don't know anybody. My exercise classes start talking about basketball just about every morning. Somebody's asking if you watched the game or if you saw who won or lost. So we're going to have a little bit of fun during March Madness, and on March the 25th at 10 o'clock, we are having basketball bingo, and you're just gonna have to come and check that out, but we have fabulous prizes. We also have a free throw competition, and we have some gift cards that are being given out as prizes for that. All of these have been donated by some local businesses, and they'll be there um, participating in our, in our fun. We're just having a good time. That's the main thing for this event, it's just to have some fun. We're also doing a fundraiser, so we're doing a 10 times fundraiser. And I have gotten a lot of crazy looks when I've said yeah, that. Yeah, because I'm like 10 times fundraiser. What, yeah, so what she doing? we have envelopes. And in the envelope, there's a little slip of paper for you to fill out. And you can put any amount of money in that envelope from $1 to $20. And when we draw on March the 25th during our, our fun basketball-themed event, you're gonna if you win, you win 10 times whatever you put in the envelope. So you might win if you put a dollar in, you might win $10. If you put a $20 bill in, you might win 200. And you can enter as many times as you want. You just can't put more than $20 in one envelope. So something a little bit fun. We've actually had a lot of fun with it at the Senior Center. A lot of people are participating. You don't have to come to the Senior Center to participate. If you'd like to join the fundraiser, you can let us know and we can get you those envelopes. But just something fun for us to do and we'll be drawing our winner on that day. That sounds like a lot of fun, and that's something that the community at large can participate in. Anyone can participate, absolutely. Speaking of bingo. We just have all kinds of bingo going on. And so we do bingo in person now. You know, we didn't for a long time, but we're in person. But we didn't drop our phone bingo because we had a lot of people who are still at home, unable to get out, or maybe just don't want to come out. You know, day like today while we're filming this, it's mm -hmm. rainy and yucky. And so people just don't maybe want to go out. And they can play bingo over the phone. You don't have to have internet. You don't have to have a computer. It is a landline local call. So you just dial in on your cell phone or your landline. Um, we do ask that you call to register for any of our bingos, so we make sure we have enough cards and all of that. But So March 25th, we just mentioned with the March Madness is an in-person um, with our basketball bingo. And then April the 14th is, at 10 o'clock is our phone bingo. We've been doing that for, for months and months now, and it's a lot of fun. You just call in. We send your cards to you, or you pick them up at the Senior Center. And then you just play right along, just like regular bingo, and we get great prizes donated for those. And then April 29th will be another in-person bingo, and they're all at 10 o'clock, so it's easy to remember the time. Um, our phone bingos are almost always on Thursday, and our in-person bingos are almost always on Friday, so it's kind of easy to keep up with when we're doing that. But lots of fun, lots of prizes, um, and, you know, again, if people will just call and let us know you want to come so we can make sure we have space. A great way to have fun, again, mm -hmm. connect with your friends, even if you're doing phone bingo. Absolutely. The phone bingo, everybody has a lot of fun. Ingrid calls the phone bingo, so everybody loves Ingrid. Ingrid's and, a lot of fun. Uh, she is a lot of fun, so it's it's really fun, and you get to kind of talk back and forth with other people while you're on there, and, and we have a good time. Um, and if you miss the March 25th, if you miss basketball bingo, you're just going to be missing out. So. Right. So really try to be there for basketball bingo. Yes. That sounds like a whole lot of fun. You also do financial planning workshops. We are. And we have a whole series of these coming up. Um, we, we, when we ask and you give us those suggestions, we really try hard to to find somebody to, to give those programs. And so a lot of people ask about financial planning and different things. So. Um, April 7th at 3, we're going to have a financial planning Q&A with Ethan Gilley, who works with Edward Jones. He's going to come in and take your questions. And so Q&As are one of the things that we get a ton of requests for, and not everybody's willing to do that. So mm -hmm. um, you can just come in and ask your questions, whatever they might be, if they're about annuities or IRAs or probably a lot of financial terms I don't even know to mention. Um, but he'll be taking questions. April the 21st at 2, this one's a really interesting one, but they're going to talk about the effects of dementia on your retirement. 
And I think a lot of people don't think about that and the financial impacts of if you or a loved one is diagnosed with dementia, what that may mean. Um, and that's going to be presented by David Hudson. He's a financial planner who's done some programs with us in the past. And he's going to talk specifically, though, about how dementia impacts some of those decisions and things that you may need to think about. And then on May 19th at 3, Ethan is going to come back and talk about um, something very relevant right now, but inflation and how that affects your retirement. So those will be some really excellent, informative programs, um, and we hope everybody comes out to attend those. Great programs. And I was just thinking with the Q&A, you may be a little bit shy and not want to ask a question, but someone else in the room probably has the same question. Or if you're a little bit shy and you don't want to ask the questions, you can pass me a note or send me an email or call and tell me your question. We'll make sure it gets asked. So you don't, if you don't want to ask, but um, usually we don't, we don't find that people are shy about asking questions most of the time. Most everybody's willing to ask. And if you're thinking that question, somebody else is probably also doing that. Cause that's a, I mean, there's just so many facets to it. And for people like me who struggle with math and finances anyway, <laughs> Yeah, this it's going to be an excellent program. opportunity, and I think people will really get some benefit out of it. Okay, from the hard stuff, well, this may this will be difficult for me, too. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and admit, but lap dulcimer program. So this is really one of, there's two really exciting things I'm going to talk about today, and this is one of them. This senior lap dulcimer program, um, I believe the conversation started in 2018 or 19 with the Arts Council. This is a Cobble Arts Council program that we've been assisting with and trying to help them. And we're trying to help advertise for them because of course it is geared toward our seniors. And of course, you know, we got everything lined up and we were almost ready to, to go with the program and COVID hit and everything stopped. And so now we're back and we actually are so excited because this is a happening, this is happening. Um, so it's going to be on Saturdays, which is really a nice thing, um, from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. It starts Saturday, April the 2nd, and it's going to be at the Hub in Hudson. They're going to, the Arts Council has a room there, and they're going to be doing that. But they're going to teach you how to play the lap dulcimer. You don't need any equipment. You don't need any experience. You only need to register because space is limited. And um, we're actually registering through the Arts Council, which is a little different from what I talk about most mm -hmm. times here. Um, and that number is 828-754-2486. However, if you call the Senior Center to register for the LAP Dulcimer Program, we will get you connected to the right place. So if you um, are just used to calling the Senior Center, we'll still get you linked up with the Arts Council. But we're really excited that this is something we're, we're finally going to get to do. Um, it's, it's made possible through a North, the North Carolina Arts Council and funding from the National Endowment for the Arts. It's really something exciting, something we've had a lot of interest in, a lot of people wanting to do. And we started when we started talking about it years ago now, it's hard to believe we're saying years ago, people were really, really interested. Um, and so we're gonna start, the first class is gonna be limited to 12 people, but hopefully if there's a lot of interest, you know, it'll be something we are able to continue, so. If you're that person who said, I've always wanted to learn to play an instrument, mm -hmm. here's this is your opportunity. Chance. And you can contact the Senior Center and we can get you some more details, or you can reach out to the Cobble Arts Council and they can get you information as well. Okay, next we have something I don't think we've ever talked about. If we have, my memory is just failing here, Senior Planet at Caldwell Senior Center. We have not talked about this program. This okay, is good. brand new, hot off the press information. And actually, we've been working on this program for a while now, but it's kind of been under wraps till we got the details um, and all the training and everything. The Cobble Senior Center is participating in a pilot program through Senior Planet, which is a division under AARP. It's a nonprofit arm, and it is all about teaching our senior population everything technology related and then some. We're focusing on technology courses for what we're doing, but we're going to be offering um, a series of lectures, workshops, and classes on everything that you can imagine. And our staff has been going through training to be able to train you and do these programs. You, you don't have to have anything. Um, we're going to be doing, to start out with, we're doing lectures and they're going to start April the 11th at 10 o'clock. Most of the lectures um, for the next 10 weeks will be on Mondays, except for that one 
Monday in May that we're closed, we'll do it on Tuesday. And we're going to be doing, first off, just lectures and workshops. So we'll be doing the benefits of connecting to the internet. Why do you want to connect to the internet? What can you get out of it? What can it do for you? Um, so that one's a lecture. The next one's going to be a workshop, and it's going to be how do I get on the internet? So if you have a tablet or a cell phone or a laptop and you want help figuring out how do I connect my device to the internet if I go somewhere, you know, what is this Wi-Fi, how does this work, and we're going to help you with that. And you can get actual help with your device. Um, we're going to talk about smartphones. One of the biggest questions we get is what exactly can you do with a smartphone? And what kind of smartphone do I want? You know, mm -hmm. what do I want? Do I want an iPhone? Do I want another phone? What's the difference? And we're going to talk about all those things. Um, something really important: protecting your personal information online and online health resources, online shopping. The list goes on and on and on. And so we're going to do those. And then starting in the summer, um, not the exact start date yet, but we're going to be doing. We'll start with Chromebook classes. So you can actually come to the senior center. And you can learn everything there is to learn about using a Chromebook. And you don't need a Chromebook. You don't have to have one. We're going to have all that for you. And you're going to come and be able to hands-on learn in a small group of other people who just want to learn how to use these devices and what they can do. And our trainers are going to be helping to teach you how to do that. And we're planning to do, you know, we'll do basic classes and then we'll do some more advanced classes for people who want to learn more. We'll alternate back and forth doing workshops and classes. Some of the classes are five and 10 weeks, depending on what session they are. So we um, are going to start out, though, with the workshops and the lectures. And then we'll be doing those classes. We actually have already um, working to get the Chromebooks in the building. We don't have them yet, which is why we're not starting until a little bit later, just to make sure we have all the equipment set up. But it's a really exciting time. We've heard from a lot of our seniors through COVID that you know, I just, I don't know how to use these things. You know, so many things have switched to being online. You need to register online or you need to sign up online or, you know, a lot of people are doing virtual appointments now and virtual, it just, we want our seniors to be able to access some of this information and make their lives better. Some of them have already ventured into that and are using things and some of them haven't used it at all. And we want to try to cover the basis for everybody. So we make sure we have something for everybody. And they're really high quality programs. Um, the curriculum has been developed and we are working with the licensing to be able to access that curriculum through AARP and Senior Planet. So we'll be able to provide you some really high quality information about everything tech and how it can make your life easier, how it can benefit your life, how you can protect yourself if you are online, just lots of different information. Lots of great information. And the thing that keeps rolling through my mind is rather than saying, I'll wait for my grandchild, uh, my neighbor's child to get here to right. help me, you'll be able to figure it out yourself. You will. And we'll have opportunities for you to come in and practice even outside of the classes if you want to come in and work on something and, and get help with it. And the other thing is, is the curriculum for these classes was written largely by people over the age of 60 and with input from people over the age of 60. So they are geared toward training seniors to use technology for things that are going to benefit them, things that they're interested in, and in a way that works for them, that makes it, you know, sometimes technology is not user friendly. Mm -hmm. And we're really working to make that accessible for people. We want people to be able to, to use those things and make their lives a little bit easier. Talking about making lives easier, you also have a lot of caregiver information because a lot of times caregivers feel isolated yes. and alone. But just those little pieces of information can make a big difference. Yes. And we, we've done a, a multitude of things. Um, the Cobble Partnership for Life's Journey has been putting together caregiver programs for a number of years now. And we've had support groups and different sessions. And we converted to virtual because of the situation. And we got um, some response initially, and then it slowed down. And we tried to decide how we could go back to an in-person type event. And so we are bringing those back um, starting in May. We're going to do, just to begin with, a three-series um, event where you're just going to come and focus on caregiver issues, things that are going to benefit you as a caregiver. We're actually going to be hosting this um, at Grace Village Assisted Living and Memory Care in Granite Falls. 
Um, so that's located on Riverbend Drive. If you're not familiar with that, we can get you some information. And it's going to be at 3 o'clock in the afternoon on May 11th, June 8th, and July 13th. And we're going to talk about resources for caregivers, some self-care. We really want to focus on self-care, things that you can do um, to keep yourself healthy. And we do ask that you register for it. There'll be some refreshments provided. And you can call the Senior Center for that, 758-2883. Um, it's going to give us a chance to kind of venture out into another part of the county and do some things there. Um, and Grace Village is a relatively new mm -hmm. assisted living facility, so it'll give you a chance to um, see some of the resources available in the county, some things that they're doing. And it's going to be just sort of, we're calling it our caregiver corner because it's going to be a little bit informal. We're just going to sit and chat and talk about some things that you can do. We want it to be comfortable. You're welcome to come and listen, or you're welcome to come and participate in the conversation, whatever level you're comfortable with. But we want to make sure that we are giving resources to our caregivers so that they can feel supported and do the job that I think is sometimes one of the most difficult jobs out there. And I think you do feel very alone sometimes as a caregiver. And we want to make sure that people know they're not alone, that there's people out there to help. Very good information and something people should really, if you're a caregiver, consider signing up. We also can't have a show without talking about SHIP. <laughs> the Senior Center always talks about SHIP. And for those of you that may not know, that's the Senior Health Insurance Information Program. It took me about four years to be able to say that without stumbling over the letters. But um, we have trained staff and volunteers. They're trained through the SHIP program with the North Carolina Department of Insurance to counsel people on Medicare, pretty much anything Medicare. That's, that's what we do. Uh, we offer classes, so we have Medicare 101 on March 21st at 3 and at May 23rd at 5.30. So we try to alternate those back and forth between being during the day and being in the evenings after people work. So if you're still working and want to come. Medicare 101 is great for anybody who's new to Medicare, going to be going on Medicare, um, or if you maybe are starting to care for somebody who's on Medicare and you don't really know how the different pieces work, it's good for you just to kind of get an overview of all of the parts, all the pieces, what do I have to do, when do I need to do it. Um, there's a lot of information that floats around out there that people um, just aren't sure about. You know, they hear this and they're like, well, somebody told me if, the, if I don't do this on time, I'll get penalized. Or if I do this, I'll have this. And so we kind of just go through and tell you all those timelines, what you need to do, when you need to do it, and we can walk you through all of that. We also have ship counselors available most days of the week. We have at least one, sometimes two or three, who are available to meet with you. Um, we can help you if you're new to Medicare, if you are getting ready to be on Medicare, if you um, maybe are eligible for a special enrollment period and you need to sign up for your Medicare Part D because of that, if you've maybe recently lost your employer coverage or you have extra help or Medicaid, we can kind of help you through those. We can help you apply for extra help. If you're having trouble with your prescription cost and you think you might be eligible for one of the subsidies, we can help you do those applications. And we're there just to answer questions. That's a lot of what we do is we just get questions. You know, I received this in the mail from Medicare and I'm not sure what it means. Or I saw this on television mm -hmm. and I just want to make sure I understand it. Or I got this notice and I don't know what to do with it. So we're, we're there just to kind of help you answer those questions. And, you know, also if you have problems with um, your plan not covering something or if you need to file an appeal, we recently helped somebody with an appeal because something had gotten denied and it was just a kind of a paperwork mix mm -hmm. up. We're able to help you sort through all those things. So, so there's lots of great information and don't hesitate to reach yeah. out if, if you have a question. Yeah, if you have a question about Medicare, we're, we're there to help. And you're a nonprofit and nonprofits run on volunteers. We can't survive without our volunteers. Um, we have wonderful volunteers, and but we're always looking for new volunteers, more volunteers. Um, there's never enough volunteers. I don't think it matters what nonprofit you're with. There's never enough volunteers. And so um, we are looking for volunteers all the time, and we use volunteers as our receptionist to greet people, answer the phone, um, assist them when they come in if they need 
you know, access finding something or signing in, those kind of things. We are always looking for people who want to teach programs. We're always looking for new programs, um, instructors for anything. Maybe it's an exercise class, an art class, a jewelry making class, anything. We're, we're interested in that. Um, we're always looking for volunteers for special projects. If we have um, something we're working on, special fundraisers, things like that, serving on different committees or boards. We are always looking for volunteers who would like to be ship counselors because that is really one of the things that we do the most of. We have a lot of people needing help with the Medicare. So we're, we'll train people to be ship counselors. And we also are always looking for volunteers to serve on our advisory committee, which just kind of directs our operations, our programming, and what seniors want to see the senior center be for them. Because it, it, it is their senior center, not my senior center. So we want the feedback and the information. And so we try to get people who are interested in serving on a, in a committee that will just say, you know, this is what I think the senior center should do, who they should be reaching out to, the types of services that should be offered. So. And you can call us to learn more about any of those. So lots of opportunities. And I don't think yes. we often think about volunteering at the Senior Center. We think about all the wonderful services right. you offer. And so. the other thing that we do, um, you know, maybe volunteering at the Senior Center is not your, your thing, and that's okay, but you do want to volunteer. We also keep a list of other agencies that are looking for volunteers. And maybe if you have a specific interest or your heart is leading you to volunteer with a, a different organization, then we can also link you up with other community agencies that need volunteers because we keep a pretty accurate list of who's looking for volunteers. And there are a lot of nonprofit agencies in this county, mm -hmm. I would say, all looking yes. for volunteers. And so if you want to work with children or if you want to volunteer with animals, or it, there's something for everybody. And we're glad to help link you up with those, those services. Probably one of the most frequent ways you communicate is through your social media. We do. Um, I never would have thought that, but that's what it, that's where we are. We do a lot with our social media. We do um, our Travel Tuesday and Wellness Wednesday. It's almost comical now because those were things we came up with to do during COVID, but they're still two of the most popular things that we do. Even, I mean, everybody comes in and says, oh, I just went to Alaska today or California or Australia, wherever Travel Tuesday may have taken us. And for those of you who don't know, it's really just, an, it's on Facebook and email. And it's just a virtual trip that we've put together to a location somewhere. And this week it was Kansas because it was National Kansas Day. Um, you never know where it may be. We just sort of come up with locations. Or if there's somewhere you've always wanted to visit and you want more information on, um, we'll be glad to do that. Um, we have a participant at the Senior Center who is from Maine who gave us a lot of really good information about Maine. So we did a trip to Maine not long ago. So just something kind of fun for you to learn a little bit about some other places and be able to see some gorgeous videos with the... One of the great things about the internet is you can find so much online about anything you want to know. So, um, And then Wellness Wednesday, we try to focus on some kind of wellness topics. Um, they differ from week to week, month to month, all these different things. And then we share all our updates on Facebook. Um, that's our primary social media avenue. So if you want to know what's happening with the Senior Center, that's the best place to look because that's going to get you the most current, most up-to-date information. Because sometimes you do have to make some changes to your schedule. We do, but yeah, especially now, because you know we we are um, we are open, but not without some some protocols. And we do, you know, we ask, don't come in if you're sick. Please don't come if you're sick at all. And so sometimes our instructors have to cancel for a day, or we have to change something. And so we want to make sure that information gets out there, and that's the quickest way for us to share that information. Now, we've talked about this for a while now, but your hours are different. They are. You've expanded? <laughs> I don't know if you call it expanded or just changed them Changed it up a little bit. Changed it up. Um, we still have the same number of hours. Uh, we are, we're open 40 hours a week. And so we tried to adjust. Um, we used to be open from 9 to 5, and people were like, well, I want to come exercise, but I like to do that before I start other things. And so we listened. And what we did is we're now open Monday and Wednesday from 8 to 4. So you can come in at 8 o'clock if you want to exercise. 
Thursday, we're open from 8 to 7, so you can come late if you want to come after work. If you want to, if you haven't checked out our 5.30 Thursday Tai Chi class, you're really, really missing out. So we have a, a great little evening Tai Chi class. And then on Fridays, we're open from 8 to 1. So we did kind of change it up trying to fit the needs of the people that are using the center. And are you seeing the expanded hours, people coming in we early? We are. We are, um, especially early. We do see a lot of people coming in um, in that eight to nine hour that we weren't open before. And then we see um, the the later hours kind of, kind of ebbs and flows. But we do have a pretty good group that's coming to the Tai Chi class. And so that's one of the things that we were focusing on. And, and during Medicare season, um, especially during open enrollment and some since, we have a lot of people who are still working and on Medicare that needed that access to those hours. So we do usually on Thursday evenings, almost all Thursday evenings, we have a ship counselor that's available till seven. So that's a nice feature if you're still working and you need some help with your Medicare, you can come after work and get that. So accessible hours, how do people reach you, April? Um, so you can come and see us. We're on Penton Avenue in Lenore, 650A Penton Avenue. We are um, our website, CobbleSeniorCenter.org, and we post our newsletters, our events, different things that are happening, a list of our class schedules are all on there. And you can also follow us on Facebook. Just make sure you're looking for Cobble Senior Center NC. Yes, I've had a couple times, I've had a little trouble finding it, but yeah. once I do, just make sure you'll recognize the, I, I don't know if it's called an icon, the yeah. clip. Yeah. See, I could do some of the computer help but you'll recognize it and know it's the right one. And in most instances, we're actually gonna be the first one to come mm -hmm. up. Um, we've got so much going on. I get a lot of calls and emails from Caldwell, Idaho mm -hmm. and Texas, yes. both of those. So typically we're the, actually the first one to pop up, So, but just make sure it's that Caldwell NC. April, thank you for being here today and thank you for all you do for our seniors in Caldwell County. Thank you. And thank you for watching Caldwell County today.